grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to this service, this choral Eucharist. Welcome to our instrumentalists, and a special welcome to Dean Rogers Govender, who is Dean of Manchester, who will be preaching today. Do visit the exhibition, Global Images of Christ and Faith, here. There are two weeks left to see it. Tomorrow is National Anti-Slavery Day, and you can see in front of me 47 woolen chains on the altar, which were crocheted by the Mother's Union. There are 47 because in 2020, there were 47 people in Cheshire who consented for their case to be referred to the police under the National Referral Mechanism. There were many more rescued from slavery, but they chose not to take their case to the police. I'm wearing a crocheted chain here of 47 links as a symbol in prayerful recognition of our local situation. And although chains maybe are somewhat outdated, I hope it raises awareness so that we can be prayerfully aware of those unseen and unheard around us. The nation continues to be in shock at the recent death of the MP, David Amos. So we hold the family, the constituents, and the nation in our prayers during this service. Now we pray for the children and leaders before they leave. Loving God, bless the young people and leaders today as they talk together and learn more about your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. O oh, help us in the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us then confess our sins. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of sin. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, the giver of life, the joys of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honour, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, for it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit. Thank you, Mr. Dean, for inviting me to preach here in your cathedral, and I bring you very warm greetings from your friends just down the road in Manchester, from Manchester Cathedral. And it's really wonderful to hear such fab music this morning, really great treat. Thank you very much indeed. I often get asked, uh, how long have I been the Dean of Manchester? And often say just a few years. In fact, I started my ministry at the cathedral 16 years ago. I mention that because 16 years hence, I'm still the only Dean of Colour in the Church of England amongst our 42 cathedrals. I begin there that gives you some idea of the the inability of our church to move forward when we are tackling issues of racism and slavery. Slavery and its companion racism go together. And tomorrow, as we observe Anti-Slavery Day, we must not forget that it was the transatlantic slave trade especially that gave rise to racism in its many horrible forms. I myself am South African by birth, having lived in this country for the past 21 years with my family. And I can share with you numerous accounts of racism, discrimination, modern slavery in all of its exploitative forms, and I think you would be horrified if I shared them with you. The reality is that racism and slavery in its modern form forms are still very much with us. A fair amount of racism still in our very progressive society in this country. And dare I say, a fair amount of racism even in the church. And I've encountered that on numerous occasions as well. 
As we think about Anti-Slavery Day this year, we know that slavery is about trafficking, vulnerable people, and exploiting them usually for profit. These are people who come to this country on the understanding that they would be offered work and a better life and often find themselves having travel documents confiscated and then put into work in rather worrying circumstances. And many people make lots of money through this terrible trade. Victims are forced, coerced, deceived into exploitation. Whilst people suffer in this way, rather sadly we in the church very often tend to be like James and John in our gospel reading, more bothered about status and places of honor instead of focusing on the suffering world that Jesus died for. A big challenge for us in our scripture reading this morning, the words of Jesus. The one who wants to be the greatest should be the one who serves, not the one who sits at the right hand or the left hand side of God. When I think about slavery, down in Manchester we are celebrating the 600th year of the Collegiate Church's establishment. And one of the things we are introducing on the 28th, 28th of this month is our first inaugural Clarkson Day. Some of you may have heard of Thomas Clarkson. About 200 years ago, he was on a tour of this country campaigning against the, anti, the, the transatlantic slave trade. He came to Manchester and he expected a very rough reception, we are told, in 1787. However, he was invited to preach at the cathedral. And on 27 October 1787, he did so to a packed cathedral with a number of black folk standing close to the pulpit where he preached. And there he started his campaign in Manchester, gathering support for the anti-slave bill in Parliament alongside Wilberforce. We are told that Clarkson did not have time to prepare a sermon because of his many, many speeches around the north of England. However, he chose the passage from Exodus chapter 23 and verse 9, where we read about, Thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger seeing that ye were strangers in Egypt. And essentially what Thomas Clarkson preached about was that black folk who were being sold from Africa around the world as slaves were strangers and we ought to have a very special concern for them just as God called the people of Israel to do during the time of Moses. Thomas Clarkson said this when he came to the cathedral, it was so full that I could scarcely get to my place, for notice had been given, though I knew nothing of it, that such a discourse would be delivered. I was surprised also to find a great crowd of black people standing around the pulpit. There might have been 40 or 50 of them. And so he preached his sermon about not oppressing the stranger in our midst. By that he was referring to black slaves, African slaves, who were being sold around the world, especially to the United States. And of course, a fair number of those folk were being sold and transported through the ports of our country here. Essentially, Clarkson was saying that if we continued in this horrible trade, then the vengeance and and the damnation from God was to be upon us. I would want to add that as Clarkson referred to African slaves, we too have right in our midst today so many others, often invisible, who are suffering the same fate in modern slavery and being exploited for their labor or for their bodies and so on. 
I, I've, I have already alluded to racism and slavery. Why is it important that we focus on slavery, including modern day slavery? Is because it was believed that black people were expendable, that they were not important, that they could be bought and sold as items. We could exploit them as we wished. And because of that, we could oppress them and discriminate against them. Many years ago, I remember when I worked in South Africa, my boss, who happened to be white, said to me, Rogers, why are you bothered about these blacks? Don't bother about the blacks. They are not our friends. And believe you me, that was often the attitude towards black people. And it all comes from the slave trade and all the attitudes that we have picked up from then. I want to make a similar appeal as Clarkson did over 200 years ago, that today we are told by various research organizations, and we know for ourselves if we take the trouble to be observant, that many people continue to suffer and get discriminated against and exploited in our city. We are told that modern slavery and exploitation takes place in virtually every community in this country. We find them in restaurants, we find them in car wash places, and so we find slavery. It was Richard Raw, one of my favorite writers, Christian writers, who said these words, and something for us as Christians to take note of. He said in one of his books, Christianity is a lifestyle, a way of being in the world that is simple, nonviolent, shared and loving. However, we made it into an established religion and all that goes with that and avoided the lifestyle change itself. One could be warlike, greedy, racist, selfish, and vain in most of Christian history, and still believe that Jesus is one's personal Lord and Savior. The world has no time for such silliness anymore. The suffering on earth is too great. I would want to add, the suffering of slaves in years gone by, and the effects of that is still with us today, and the suffering of many in our modern slave conditions is just as bad. And so today's service, focusing on these beautiful works of art by the Mothers' Union, reminding us of the many cases here in this city, and the Mothers' Union in Manchester have done something very similar. We have a great big hanging like that in the cathedral installed two days ago, a reminder to us of what goes on in our cities. Folks, we need to be observant. We need to stop and do something about, about modern slavery and racism. We cannot turn a blind eye. We've got to stop and take note, and we've got to do something about it. Thomas Clarkson spoke very much about the stranger in our midst. Jesus said, did he not? When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. Matthew 25. The words of our Lord teaching us about the strangers in our midst. Those who suffer the effects of modern slavery are the strangers in our midst. We ought to reach out to them and welcome them and do something about their plight and not allow them to be exploited. When you go to the car wash next time, take note of the person washing your car. Are they here legitimately? Are they being exploited? Are we just going because it's a cheap car, car wash? Things for us to take note of. Let me end by telling you a little story. A man was asked to paint a boat for somebody to be paid to do the job. And the man who owned the boat went off and left him to do the job. The man went off on a business trip. Whilst he was there, he heard from his children that they had taken the boat for a 
for a ride into the lake where they lived. And this man was very, very worried about his children. So he rushed back home and inquired whether, whether they were all right. Remember, he had asked for the boat to be painted, which was done. And the kids were all fine. When he looked at the boat on careful examination, knowing that the boat also had a hole on one end, he went and looked and found that the hole in the boat was repaired. And he was quite surprised. And so he went to the man with whom he had asked to paint the boat and said, thank you so much for what you had done. Please accept this extra payment. And the man said, for what? He said, well, I asked you to paint the boat for me, but I noticed that you also repaired the boat, the hole that was in the boat. My children had taken it out for a, for a, for a ride. Had, it, had you not repaired the hole, they would have drowned. And I think the point of the story is simply this. As Christians, we often do certain things as taught in our faith. When do we actually take the time to do something more? Are we simply painting boats? Or are we also repairing the holes as well, wherever we find it, in our society, in our communities, in the life of the church? as we observe modern slavery day tomorrow, anti-slavery day tomorrow. Remember the words of Clarkson. Remember the words of the Lord in Exodus. Remember the words of Jesus. When I was a stranger, did you welcome me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, who loves all your children, we pray for the whole of humanity facing the same problems throughout the world. Show us how to live in peace with one another, with other human beings of every color, class, gender, sexuality, and ability and welcome the stranger at our door. Work for the general good, and let us not destroy the beautiful world of plants and animals that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the forthcoming climate change conference in Glasgow, for real communication and commitment to change. Lead and guide us, Lord, away from selfishness and greed 
and towards cooperation and shared resources. Let us be doers of your word, not hearers only, and lead us to actions that will reverse the damage already done to our world before it's too late. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the family and friends of MP Sir David Amos, murdered while carrying out his job as a representative of his constituents. Thank you, Lord, for the work and dedication of MPs running our country and protect our democracy against the enemies of peace. We pray that terrorism will not succeed in separating ordinary people from those who represent them and that it will fail in its attempts to destabilize our society. Let us not be afraid to welcome the stranger among us. Lord, in your mercy. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to claim lives throughout the world, we pray for all the doctors, nurses, and scientists working so hard. We pray for all the people on hospital waiting lists, as well as for the on ongoing vaccination programme. Let us be mindful in our plenty of the people still struggling to receive vaccines, especially in Africa. Let us share what we have with the stranger in need and enable the whole world to benefit from the skill and expertise of the researchers. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those suffering injustice all over the world, especially in this country, those seeking asylum, who are enslaved, families struggling on low incomes, and for all who work to alleviate suffering, especially in our links in Russia, India, and Chester. You have chosen us to represent you on earth in all our various ministries. Give us grace, energy, and resources to help other people wherever you place us as we minister to the stranger in our midst. Lord, in your... You'll put an end to the uncertainty of her situation and let her come home. And we ask your blessing on all those whose endurance is stretched to its limits. Healing God, be with all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We ask this morning especially for your healing for Christine Linklater and Edna de Luce. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. With all the saints in heaven, we look for the resurrection of the body and eternal life with you. Be with all who sit in vigil with the dying and hear us as we remember those who have died recently, especially Ken Slatter. Grant us with them a share in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you please stand? God calls us to peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. 
Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. So
Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave himself up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favor on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection, in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all an honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Gathering our prayers and praise into one, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. God, our Father, whose Son, the light unfailing, has come from heaven to deliver the world from the darkness of ignorance. Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life and walk in it without stumbling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And just before we finish the service, you might have noticed that there is an installation outside the West Door by Jeremy Turner from the Chester University. That's an installation leading up to COP26, which was mentioned in our prayers. The purpose is to challenge us as to what we do with our waste materials. It's made of sustainable materials, and it says to us, as you look through it at the West Doors, so what are we doing to help preserve our world? the world that God has placed us in. So I invite you to look at it and be challenged and to consider your own role in this world. Would you like to stand for the blessing? The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.